cancer, malnutrition, injustice, insanitation, and ignorance about the climate change are challenging our very existence on this planet as we speak. This is no news, and I agree that these and many more problems, such as Trump's hair, need to be addressed now. But priority to one of the last European problems first, so obviously Bojo's hair. <laughs> what I disagree with is that deep space exploration is somehow stealing resources and preventing us from healing the life on Earth. I understand the skeptics need to take their stress out on something, but please don't make Mars your stress ball. I'm going to speak about humanity's Mars exploration as we are standing on the verge of humanity's next giant leap. And I'm here to advocate for no more space race, but a common ride to Mars, because this planet is our potential donor of a new life. Our chance to unite today to inspire the generations of tomorrow about science, technology, and a sustainable life as a multi-planetary species. But of course, it all starts on Earth. And for me, it started here. Unless your geography knowledge is out of this world, you're gonna need perspective on this one. So that's where I originally come from, and that's where the roots of my idea grow from. But this idea could only grow and mature thanks to my intercultural experiences. Nine years ago, I first moved with my mom, this fantastic woman, who had sacrificed the life as she had known it and risked everything to give me more opportunities. And ever since then, I have been on the go. Today, I can't yet take you to Mars. It's still a little bit too dangerous, but I'm working on it. And I owe it to you to explain why we should go to Mars together. So why should we go to Mars? Well, the shortest answer is you. You will benefit from this endeavor either in long term or in very long term, but everybody does benefit from space exploration. Just to give you a quick example, I think everybody here owns a pair of trainers. Did you know that trainers is a spin-off product of space travel? And now I'm gonna give you five top reasons, five more reasons to go to Mars together. So let's begin with science, my personal favorite reason to go to Mars. Planetary evolution, solar system formation, geological, biological, atmospheric, and even psychological studies are only some examples of the science to do on Mars. And yet the biggest one is the search for life. How does life begin? Are we alone? Finding life? or not, will bring us closer to the answer to these fundamental questions. If we find a new form of life, one that does not run on RNA and DNA reproduction, we will open a whole new chapter of life sciences. And if we don't, if we find a life form that is similar to ours, well, that is, if not more, then at least as exciting, because that means that similar life forms appear elsewhere, which means we are not alone. For those of you who are excited, you might still ask me, but why not send robots to do the job and look for life? Here I quote something I heard at a cocktail party. And it's only a fancy way to call a poster session at a conference, but for researchers, it's a cocktail party, all right? So at a cocktail party, Monsieur Leblanc told me, I see one hardcore reason to go to Mars. No one can dig a hole better than a human. And he is right in two ways. Firstly, technically it is easier to send a human to dig a big hole on Mars than to send the heavy machinery with all the supplementary technology to make it work on Mars. And secondly, and more importantly, 
No robot can replace a human, at least not yet to our luck. From the Apollo program, Harrison Schmidt turned from geologist to an astronaut, and he had trained the first moonwalkers in geology and sample collection. Yet it was him himself who had brought back the most scientifically interesting samples. So you see, even between equally well-trained and qualified people, there is a difference. And who makes the difference? And the robot simply comes nowhere close to human in-situ judgment. Because a robot is limited to the prescribed instructions. And we cannot prescribe human curiosity, ingenuity, and intuition. These reside at the core of new discoveries, such as the search for life. And while I'm talking about the search for life, I also want to talk about our life, because it makes the second reason to go to Mars. In fact, it is life and the evolution of Homo sapiens, because going to Mars is a new step in our evolution as a species. Back 400,000 years ago, or as early as a million years ago, the Homo erectus picked up a stick and made the first fire. Tomorrow, Homo sapiens will pick up a stick, mount on top of a rocket, and blast off to Mars to make the first habitat. About 35,000 years ago, humans quit using the shelter of caves, and it is now time to quit using the shelter of Mother Earth for exploration. This is an evolutionary step that we can be conscious about. And imagine, maybe in taking this step, we will achieve such an enhanced life that your roommates or flatmates will never again almost finish the milk box and still put it in the fridge. This is the life as we know it, or at least as I know it. And I also want to talk about how Mars exploration will improve our life. In fact, the next reason to go to Mars together is Earth and life on it. Cancer, malnutrition, and insanitation are already being addressed from space, and through Mars exploration, we will only do so much better. I want to tell you a story. But before I begin, I want to mention that I'm 25. Well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but the story is about Paige Nickerson and her battle with cancer. Because I want you to stay positive and happy, I'm going to cut right to the happy ending of 2008, when Paige was the first ever patient to receive neurosurgery assisted by a robot capable of resonance magnetic imaging. The robot called the NeuroArm is a spin-off technology of Canadarm. And Canadarm was developed for the US Space Shuttle program. And it was developed for reasons far from medical. When the technology came back to Earth, it has been adapted for medicine and helped dozens of people with the most stubborn and well-hidden tumors to overcome cancer and live. Paige was only 21, and if not for her doctors and the neural arm, she might not have made it till 25. And for sure, she wouldn't be enjoying a happy life with her child right now. For Mars exploration, we will have to come up with an enhanced version of the neural arm, one which will be capable of a diversified surgical application when there is no specialized doctor around the corner. And this future technology will have direct applications on remote areas on Earth, even further away than where I come from. From cancer to malnutrition. And as ESA-led research called Melissa found a byproduct of this research, codenamed the bacterium RED, which, has, which was found to reduce the bad cholesterol levels by up to 50%. Think about it. That means we can eat 25% more junk food and drink 25% more delicious red wine. More jambon beurre, magret du canard, and oh my god, the french fries. But seriously, people are sick. And more people are getting seriously close to getting sick. According to the World Health, World Health Organization's report of 2008, 
up to 39% of world's entire population has elevated cholesterol levels. These people could benefit from the finding of bacterium red as it could help to bring down their risk of developing heart disease and stroke. And now I ask you, isn't it unjust that the mere chance of you being born in a developed or developing country had defined whether you had access to clean water and sanitation? Even here, did human space exploration make an improvement? when in Morocco in 2014, a fully self-sustaining water filtering system became available for the benefit of students of Kinitra and the locals of Sidi Taibi. Something that was developed once to serve and sustain the life of astronauts up on the International Space Station is now serving the UN Sustainable Development Goal number six, clean water and sanitation. For Mars exploration, Melissa program is looking into a closed loop life support system, one that will generate water, recycle it, and grow food from waste and bacteria. I see skeptical faces. I understand Magret du Canard sounds yummier to you, but it is the future of complete sustainability for which we should make more space in our lives if we want to solve the down to earth problems. And we want to solve those problems. Well, first of all, for ourselves, but also for the people who come after us. Which brings me to the next reason. The inspiration for the younger generation about learning, about adventure, about space and our place in it. I can't imagine growing up knowing there are heroes living on Mars, but my little three-year-old brother might and the generation after his will. Be honest with me now. How many of you at some point in your life had aspired to become astronauts? Raise your hands. It's really good, about 80%. Today, 10 to 60% of children aspire to become astronauts. And the number depends on the culture and the country they live in as about 30% want to become video loggers in the UK and the US. This shows you that children get inspired by what is popular and what they know about. In China, up to 56% of children want to become astronauts. And that's because China is investing and growing their space sector. Now, I'm not going to anticipate why a totalitarian government of an overpopulated country is investing in space human outposts. But children, they simply get wholeheartedly amused by space. And imagine what we can inspire them to do when they have heroes on Mars. They can even become astronaut video loggers. And now you're ready for the most gainful reason. The intercultural and international effort, collaboration and experience. When I moved to Sweden, I went into an international school. And on the first day, a teacher made us draw the map of the world in under one minute. Now please, close your eyes, really close them, and imagine drawing the world for me now. You can wave your hands in the air if you need to sketch it, or just imagine the world as you know it. Now open your eyes and get amused at how your map might have looked different from this one. As we are in France, you might have actually come close to the next map, which was drawn by your geographical neighbor, a Spanish person. I remind you, this is the map of the entire world. And if you were a climate activist, perhaps you would have drawn something like this. The maps are all different, yet they have one thing in common. The country of origin is beautifully portrayed, while the rest of the world is often forgotten. And don't worry, you're not a bad person. This is a normal result for this simple experiment. And what's also normal is had I invited you down here to join me on this little TED carpet and asked you to draw the world together, you would have been seeing a drawing a more complete picture of the world with all its colors and the perspectives. Just like I was when I went to this international school. People had invented borders that were never there 
to impose structure and control over territories. And while those borders may be needed, we shouldn't have borders here or here. I find the most successful human achievement to be the International Space Station. Because in the middle of nowhere, people have managed to come together and build an incredible institution of science and technology that has been for the benefit of our lives back on Earth for more than 20 years. And I believe that the ISS was built upon the very wise words of Yuri Gagarin, who for over 50 years ago said, Competition may be good to develop sectors locally, but collaboration is what we need. Because from a unified collaboration, both the USSR and the US could benefit, and even the rest of the world, and particularly the world of cosmonautics, so science and exploration. Remember, competition raises winners. Collaboration raises leaders. It is like when my mom brought me to a whole new part of the world to give me more opportunities for new adventures and to fulfill my purpose for humanity. It is for more opportunities for life, science, new technology and the unified multicultural experience. Together, we can and will go to Mars sooner, safer, and at a lesser cost in a more sustainable way. That is why I do not want any more space race, and that is why we should go to Mars together. Thank you.